what is up welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here then just welcome to my channel go ahead and hit the subscribe button because you won't be disappointed today's video i got a little bit of explaining to do because i have been gone i think a month now if you saw my last video the pin comment i mentioned that i wasn't feeling good i was feeling terrible and mama was sick so I had taken some time just to, you know, nurse myself back to health, put myself back together. And as fate would have it, I was in a terrible car accident driving down the street in my 6 bow. And all of a sudden, this red Mustang is coming down the street in the opposite direction. And then all of a sudden, veers over into my lane, like at a crazy high speed. I see him coming. I try to hit my brakes. And my horn and he runs straight into me it was the most terrifying thing i think i've ever been through to see him coming to know he was gonna hit me and then having like no control like it was literally nothing i could do to avoid it y'all he hit me so hard like all of my airbags deployed in the car that i had which was the um jeep renegade all of the airbags in the front underneath like the dashboard and the steering wheel and all along the sides of the car is airbags so they all immediately deploy and i cannot see out of my windows all i can see is the airbags like they cover up all the windows and my car is just spinning so i don't know if something else is coming if something else is going to hit me like it was just completely terrifying luckily though i walked away from the accident not that badly injured physically i didn't break anything i just had a bunch of bruising y'all ain't never had this much bruising and these many scratches in all of my life so i left the scene i went to the emergency room i always imagined the emergency room just like full of patients waiting on a room with stab wounds bullet wounds and all kinds of stuff like all kinds of crazy stuff going on literally there was no one that was myself and my mother and uh Got x-rays done, nothing was broken, just like I said, a bunch of swelling, a bunch of scratches, a bunch of bruising that just does not still want to go away. It's been weeks and the shit just is still not trying to go nowhere. You still can see the whole imprint of, of the seatbelt in my chest and it's been weeks, but I'm making progress. I made some whipped shea butter today and so hopefully that helps the rest of these marks and um, scratches to disappear i'm not gonna keep you long because i know you came here for the true crime story but you know just like just give me like two more minutes after the accident i was real shaken up like i think i had ptsd for real like seriously i was so scared to drive and then when i had to drive like i would just sit there and i'm just like because this is the thing when i was younger and i wanted to drive my mom's truck after i did driver's ed and i just thought that i could rule the roads she would always say like i don't want you to drive it's not that i don't trust you i don't think you know what you're doing it's that you can be the safest driver on the road and someone else can cause something to happen and I thought that was bullshit forever I was just like girl if you don't want me to drive your car just say that just say that but now I know exactly what she means because this was the prime example of that and so knowing that and having experienced that I was just scared to drive because I'm just like what if somebody else hits me it could have been 18 wheeler I could be dead like this this could have been a lot worse and if you've been following my channel for a while you know that earlier this year somebody ran into my last car in February which is how I end up with the Jeep Renegade. My mother is like a car buying expert and she was just like, look online and see what you want. Like see what you want your next car to be. And I was just like, well, what if I can't get it? I picked out the Jeep Wrangler Unlimited and I was just like, what if I can't get that? She was just like, girl, whatever. We're going to the car dealership and we're gonna get your car. And we did yesterday. I'll insert a video of my girl. She doesn't have a name yet. I was gonna name her Tina Turner. But I decided against it. So if you got a good name, drop it in the comments. Please, y'all give me some names for my new baby. But here she is. She's so beautiful. I love her so much. She is a 2021 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Sport 4x4. And I love her. Over the last week, I've been feeling more comfortable driving. But once I got behind the wheel of her, I'm like, girl, I'm ruling the road. I feel like she's so powerful. Like, bitch, hit me if you want to. Matter of fact, if somebody hit me in this car, I just might get out swinging. Well, all the pain I was in after the last accident. If I'm able to swing, I'm going to swing. If I'm able. But that's pretty much it as far as where I've been and why I've been absent from YouTube. I did make a community post just to let you guys know what was going on a couple weeks ago. And um, a lot of you guys reached out. A lot of you guys reached out to me on Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram. Thank you so much. I appreciate all the concern and the love and the well wishes and the prayers. Your well wishes and concern just meant the world to me. And I appreciate it. And shout out to Mariko, the car dealer. Great car salesman. Anybody that I know that's looking to buy a vehicle, I'm going to send them your way. 
And so that is it for all of that. I'm back. Without further ado, let's just get into the video. Mama is back to do what she does. The BTK killer, he was an active member in his church. Ted Bundy, his neighbors consider him to be charming and charismatic. So you never can be sure what goes on in the homes of your neighbors and sometimes your own home. Elizabeth Fritzl spent 24 years in captivity, confined to a makeshift cellar and repeatedly tortured at the hands of her own father. While the neighbors and even her mother who also occupied the home had no clue. Her father's name was Joseph Fritzl and this is their story. Today's video is about a horrible man. Like aren't they all? About horrible people yes but this one is particularly horrible and ugly honestly but anywho like i said his name is joseph fritzel he was born april 9th 1935 so all you pisces out here he's your mans okay these your people this kind of stuff y'all pull well i hope not honestly y'all know i'm just joking you know what's so funny a lot of times people in the comments they they miss the comedic relief behind pointing out these sun signs and they take it so personally and they're offended and i think it's just hilarious but anyway for the rest of y'all for the 99 percent of y'all who who get me he was a pisces and so if you're a pisces he's your man he was born in austria and there wasn't much about his early childhood online like i really couldn't find anything but in 1956 when he was just 21 he marries his sweetheart 17 year old rose marie together the couple they have seven children, three sons, and four daughters. Their daughter, Elizabeth, at the age of 15, she began taking a course to become a waitress. I didn't know that was a thing, but apparently it is. In January of 1983, Elizabeth runs away from home and she takes hiding with a friend that she had met from work. But this does not last long because within three weeks, she is located by police and returns to her parents. She continues the course to become a waitress and she finishes it in 1984 and is offered a job as a waitress in a nearby town now she had reportedly run away from home because she said that her father had been abusing her now it's unclear whether or not she had reported this to the police when they found her and returned her home i would hope not i would hope they wouldn't return her home knowing that she was in an abusive household but we don't know at least i don't know for sure if that was the case but according to her her father had been abusing her since she was 11 years old and she just felt like she could no longer take it so three years into her studies she tries to leave home not long after elizabeth's 18th birthday her father joseph who had at the time been working on a cellar he tells her that he needs her assistance to carry a door down into the basement of the home he had been doing some remodeling work down there and so she goes down to the basement to assist him with putting the door up he just needed her to hold it up while he put like the little like the the hinges and the screws and all of that jazz in to hold the door up and so she's holding it up while he's trying to fit it into the frame and as soon as he finishes he takes an ether soaked face towel holds it over her mouth she immediately passes out and then he throws her into the cellar behind the door that he had just put up and locks it. From there, he goes back upstairs into the house as if nothing had happened and time goes by. The family is like, where's Elizabeth? Rosemary is growing concerned because she doesn't know where her child is. Like, of course, any mother would be concerned. 18 or not, baby, you're still my kid. And I need to know where you are. Now, Joseph pretends to also be very alarmed and concerned about Elizabeth's whereabouts along with the rest of the family. Rosemary eventually files a missing persons report because she's like I said, she's a concerned mother. For weeks, police were not able to locate Elizabeth. There was no word from Elizabeth. Like everybody was concerned. And then out of nowhere, a letter arrives from Elizabeth. The letter claimed that she had grown tired of her family and simply run away. Like she just, she was tired of the family dynamic and she just decided she no longer wanted to be in the household and she left. She warned her parents not to look for her, not to come for her. The letter was postmarked from a town in Upper Austria and in the letter she claimed to have been staying with a friend. She also warned her parents against looking for her or she would leave the country altogether and go further away from them and they would potentially never see her again. Immediately, Joseph, he calls the police. When they come to the house, Joseph hands over the letter to police 
for them to review and analyze and he tells police that while he is unsure of where she actually is it's his belief that she possibly joined a cult in upper Austria and that it probably would be best to just let her do her thing and stop looking. The letter was indeed in Elizabeth's handwriting. He had actually forced her to write the letter. The letter was the first of many that he would force her to write while he held her in captivity, literally 20 feet below where the police were standing and where Rosemary and the rest of the family lived. Now, I don't know, you're probably wondering like, how the hell was he keeping her down there? And they not know, like the other family members not know anything. Joseph would forbid his wife and other children from ever going into the basement he claimed to be doing work down there. And we've seen this before in what the shoe fetish slayer. He had the, I believe the garage to himself. We've seen this before, child, where they be like, don't go. And then the wife just don't go. See, a nosy bitch like me, I'm going down there to see what you're doing. But see, little Miss Rosemary, she wasn't a nosy bitch like me. <laughs> bars see i feel like i'm back i feel like i'm back y'all i'm really back joseph instructed his family never to go into the basement and they never did over the next 24 years joseph visits elizabeth in the cellar and i don't think that i mentioned before he had been building on this cellar specifically for this reason he had been planning on locking his daughter away and keeping her down beneath the house in the cellar for some time. He would visit her in this hidden chamber that he had built for her. Almost every day he would bring her food. He would bring her, what the fuck? Every day bringing her food and other supplies. He would also often torture her. And the abuse that she had been enduring at his hands since she was 11 years old also continued. He would also torture her like for his own crazy, weird, sadistic pleasure. Two years into her captivity, Elizabeth becomes pregnant by Joseph. Though she miscarried 10 weeks into her pregnancy, two years after that, however, she becomes pregnant again by Joseph. And I swear I love y'all, cause I know by this time y'all cussing him out in y'all's head, just like I am and was. This time she carries to term and she gives birth to a baby girl in late August of 1988. A baby girl that she named Kirsten. Another two years go by and another baby is born. This time she gives birth to a son named Stefan. And this pattern continued for the duration of her captivity, which I told you in all was 24 years. In total, Elizabeth gives birth to seven children, one of which she lost 10 or so weeks after she had given birth. Three remained in the cellar with their mother, Lisa, Monica, and Alexander. Those were the three children that remained in the cellar with Elizabeth, whereas the other three were taken upstairs and raised by Joseph and Rosemary as their own. Joseph and Rosemary were actually approved by local social service authorities as the three children's foster parents. See, when Joseph built the cellar, he really just built the cellar for Elizabeth. He wasn't anticipating them creating seven children and so he was running out of space so once they began running out of space that became a problem now in order to conceal what he was doing to elizabeth from his wife rosemary joseph would stage these elaborate findings or discoveries of these children one he placed on a doorstep with a note attached that was from Elizabeth saying that she could not take care of the child and that she felt like the kid would be better off in the hands of her parents. Another, he placed literally in a bush as an infant, placed a little newborn in a fucking bush right outside the door, again with a note from Elizabeth saying that she could not take care of the child and wanted to leave them with her parents. And shockingly, they will call social services or call the authorities, present the letter and the child and social services never really questioned it much. They were just kind of like, okay, well, let's just make this official and do the paperwork and I'll be on my way without really looking into it any, any further than that. They just, they just said, okay and allowed the fritzels to keep the children and raise them as their own. I mean, yeah, it does sound crazy as hell, but 
Officials were under the impression that these were the Fritzl's grandchildren, so I guess that's why they felt like it wasn't such a bad decision to allow them to be the foster parents if they were willing and wanting to be. The family also received regular visits from social services just to check in on the kids and see how things were going, and nothing ever seemed out of the ordinary or to be unusual, and so nothing ever aroused their suspicion. They just, it just was what it was. They just appeared to be too good grandparents who had taken in their abandoned grandchildren. Now, for the three children that remained in the cellar with Elizabeth, Trifling as Joseph did expand the cellar from 380 square feet to 590 square feet just to give them a little more space, which wasn't a whole lot more space. Trifling bastard. And he's really a trifling bastard because he didn't get down there and do the work himself. He actually had Elizabeth and the three children that were down there with her to dig with their bare hands into like the dirt to like expand the cellar. Like they literally were clawing with their hands at the dirt to expand their living space. He forced them to do this. Like he literally managed to do so by putting Elizabeth and her children to work for months digging out soil with their bare hands. He set up a television and a radio for them for their entertainment. He also placed a little refrigerator down there for them to store food. He gave them a microwave for them to warm up the food. I will insert pictures because he had it pretty much looking like a small, like rundown apartment down there. She had like a hot plate, like an electric little hot plate stove for her to be able to cook for her kids. She had dishes, they had a toilet, they had a little sink, a small tub. Like it literally looked like a small apartment down there like anything you have in an apartment they had down there in that cellar in an effort to give her child the most normal experience that she possibly could and to keep her sanity elizabeth would spend her days trying to teach the children like how to count teaching them colors teaching them math trying to educate them as best as she could she taught the children how to read she taught them how to write literally everything like she really attempted to give them the most normal childhood under the most horrific, disgusting circumstances. Although Joseph made it very difficult at times, like even more difficult than what I've told you so far. When he would get upset, he would shut off the lights, he would cut off the water down there, he would refuse to deliver them food for days at a time. In an effort to punish them anytime that Elizabeth did or said anything that he just didn't like or agree with. I believe I got the names backwards of the three kids that went upstairs versus the three kids that remained downstairs. Kirsten, Stefan, and Felix were the three that remained down there with Elizabeth. Those were the first three that were born those were the three eldest children he would threaten them to keep quiet to not make any noise he would warn them against trying to escape by threatening to gas out the chamber like re release the gas in the chamber that just will kill them all if they ever try to escape joseph also lied and told elizabeth and the kids that the door that led to the cellar was electric and that they would receive an electric shock if they ever tried to escape or meddle with the door in that way and so they believed him and were afraid to meddle with the door in any kind of way and so they never did now according to Rosemary's sister Christine Joseph went into the cellar every day at 9 a.m. Every day at 9 a.m. He would go into the cellar allegedly to draw plans for machines which he sold to firms and so when he did that they assumed that he was down there working and that was not the case. She also said that he would often stay the entire night spend nights down there and he would not allow his wife Rosemary to bring him anything not coffee not tea not dinner nothing for no reason was she allowed to come into the cellar? And of course the other children by this time, they had, they were grown, moved out of the house. So it was much easier for him to keep his little secret a secret. And Rosemary, she didn't find this odd. As she saw it, her man was a hardworking man and he was just really serious about his work and he just did not want to be bothered while he was down there working hard and was thoroughly dedicated to his career now as if it wasn't strange enough that rosemary was living in the house with her daughter who she thought had gone missing all these years ago rosemary and joseph actually rented out a room on the ground floor of the house that they lived in and the tenant would complain about hearing noises underneath the floorboards like while joseph was not 
in the basement and Joseph just told him and Rosemarie that it was an old house and that old pipes would make noises, that it was perfectly normal. It was just faulty pipes. The tenant was pretty much satisfied with this this answer. It didn't seem too odd, like it seemed seemed like a plausible explanation for the noise and went on for 12 years living in that room in that house hearing those noises and thinking oh it's just faulty pipes or the gas heating system never catching on finding out or realizing that it was a whole human being four whole human beings living right underneath his bedroom. Now on April 19, 2008, Kirsten, the firstborn, is now 19 years old and she is very sick. Like she becomes very ill and no matter what Elizabeth does or what Joseph brings down there to help her like get over it, she's not getting over it. And so Elizabeth begins to beg him to allow Kirsten to receive some sort of medical attention because she was fearing that her child would die at this point. Kirsten was critically ill and Elizabeth was very much afraid for her daughter's life. When Rosemary leaves the house, Joseph agrees to take Kirsten to the emergency room. Elizabeth helps him carry her up the stairs and this is the first time that she's been out of this cellar in 24 years. 24 motherfucking years. As soon as they got Kirsten up the stairs, Joseph immediately forces Elizabeth back down into the basement where he locks the door and tells her to stay put and that he will be back. I wouldn't have even trusted him. Like, I would have been afraid he would dump my child off in the woods somewhere. I wouldn't even, I don't think I would have trusted that he was going to take her to the hospital. But I mean, I don't know if I would have allowed that to keep me from her having a chance at seeking medical attention. Joseph calls for an ambulance. The ambulance takes her to the hospital where she is admitted and her condition is found to be a life-threatening kidney failure. Now, Joseph had allowed the ambulance to take Kirsten to the hospital ahead of him. He later arrives at the hospital with a note written by Kirsten's mother allegedly he tells the doctor about the note the doctor tells him about kirsten's condition but the doctor finds the note to be pretty odd he's just like you found what you say what now the doctor thought the note was kind of strange along with the medical staff like everybody who had a hand in her treatment just felt like something was off like something didn't seem right and so they contacted the police behind joseph's back now police they appeal to the public asking for Kirsten's mother to please come forward do not be afraid like just come forward and just talk to us we just want to have a little chat over the course of a week they broadcast appeals to the public for anybody who is related to Kirsten any of her family that can come forward and give like a medical history of anything that will help them help her and to help them figure out this this whole mystery behind this young girl but nobody comes forward because she has no outside family like Joseph's crazy ass is her family at the same time they are questioning kirsten about her family and she really doesn't have much to say like she doesn't know what to tell the police she's not giving them much to go by and it just really really seems strange that nobody was coming forward she wasn't saying much but joseph kept bringing his ass down to the hospital asking questions which made him seem very very suspicious they become very suspicious of joseph and they're just like this motherfucker is up to something something ain't right they began looking into joseph and his past and who he is and it didn't take long for them to realize that this is the man whose daughter went missing so they revisit the disappearance of elizabeth and they're like something ain't right now when they question joseph about elizabeth he sticks to the original story about how she went missing and he tells them as if it's a fact and confirmed that she has joined a religious cult and that she just ran away and she has not returned only to drop her children off on the doorstep and in the bushes of their home over the years because she could not take care of them or did not want to take care of them. He also presented police with what he claimed to be the most recent letter from Elizabeth. It was dated in January of that year, which is 2008. They contacted the cult expert and they were like, can you look into this? Cause something don't seem right. Like, can you just give us your expert opinion? Can you lend us your expertise? No surprise here. He raised hella doubt about Joseph's story and the existence of this, this cult that Joseph claimed his daughter was now a part of. He was just like, no, this don't sound right. Mm -mm, don't believe it. It's a lie. 
Boy, if you don't get now, Joseph leaves the hospital, returns home, and retreats to the cellar immediately. Elizabeth is begging him to allow her to go to the hospital to see her child. He's like, nah. On April 26, 2008, exactly a week to the day that Kirsten was rushed to the hospital, and after the full week of them questioning her and making it very public, pleading for any family to come forward, Joseph goes down to the cellar and he releases Elizabeth along with her son Stefan and Felix and allows them to come upstairs. This is the first time that these children have ever been anywhere other than the cellar. Like that is insane. He takes Elizabeth to the hospital where Kirsten is being treated. While they're in there visiting with her, the doctor tips off the police that he and Elizabeth are at the hospital and uh, they need to come quick, like drop everything, Craig's in trouble, come quick type of, you know, type of tea. And so the police immediately come. Why am I whispering? The police immediately come. They detain both Elizabeth and Joseph and separate them and then take them down to the police station to do some questioning because of course they got questions because this whole thing just seems crazy. And then not to mention Elizabeth's ass has been missing for 24 years. Like, girl, you just can't show up and... We don't question you. I don't know how the hell Joseph thought that was gonna go, but whatever. At first, Elizabeth was afraid, of course. She was still afraid. She just wanted to see her child. Like, she was afraid of her father. And so she was thinking to the made up story that he told her to stick to, which was that she had run away and joined this crazy cult and abandoned her children, all of this. But police knew that this was BS. And they felt like she was sticking to the story out of fear, which of course she was. At that point, they told her that if she told the truth, she never would have to see her father again. And at that moment, all hell breaks loose. Over the next two hours, she tells the police the story about all of the abuse that she had endured at the hands of her father from age 11 all the way up to her 24 years that he held her in captivity in their family home. She went into full detail about all of the things that he would make her do which some included watching pornographic videos in front of the children and then forcing her to act out the scenes in front of the children Ugh. in an effort to humiliate her and just degrade her and just be a sick, sad individual. Immediately after the interview, 73-year-old nasty-ass Joseph Fritzl is arrested. His wife, Rosemarie, along with all of their other children, claim to have no knowledge of what had been happening to Elizabeth or that she was even there in the household. Like, they said they had no clue of any of the abuse at all. Three days after this, DNA comes back and confirms that he is the father of both Elizabeth and her daughter, Kirsten, and her son, Stefan, and her son, Felix and the other three children that were their foster children. Now, after the DNA came back, his defense lawyer said that although the DNA test proved incest, further evidence would be required to prove that the relationship was not consensual and that it was not proof of enslavement. Like, I don't even understand how some of these people defend some of these people. Like, what are you, what are you saying, Mr. Sir? Like, what do you mean? Luckily, his defense sucked and he was ultimately sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after just 15 years although he says that he has no interest in parole and that he would just gladly spend out the rest of his days behind bars he is currently 84 years old and still in prison child looking terrible look at him his hair falling out child he just looked a mess Today, Elizabeth Fritzl lives under a new identity in a secret location in Austria. It's a little village only known as Village X. The family has not allowed any interviews. They have refused to give any themselves. They just want full privacy and just to go on about their life and live as good and normal as possible, which I don't blame them at all. And the last photo taken of her was actually her at 16 years old. This is the last, this is the last photo taken of Elizabeth Fritzl. The Austrian authorities have done an amazing job at allowing her to live her life outside of the media. It's kind of like the media just fell back and just really allowed her to take on her new life, her new identity, and just live her new life as normally as possible. There was also a lot of work that needed to be done 
getting the upstairs children acquainted and familiar and comfortable with the downstairs children their childhood and their lives were completely different like they were like polar opposites so it took a lot of psychiatric help which the family was very open to to get them just to live as one and to just be okay i guess for lack of better terms 2010 is the latest update that we really have gotten about elizabeth and her family situation and prior to that like between 2008 when everything blew up to 2010 her and her mother rosemary they had grown completely estranged but at that point they were working on mending their relationship things had gotten better and um yeah elizabeth and her children were just trying to go on about their life and that pretty much is the end of the story we typically don't see too many good endings that is a particularly good ending to a terrible terrible story and that is pretty much it for this video thank you so much for watching i love you guys deep i appreciate you so much i really am so so happy to be back in these youtube streets okay i miss y'all so much let me know your thoughts down in the comment section i can't wait to read them and chit chat with you guys stay safe stay positive and be blessed child and i will see you in the next one peace three sons and four dollars i really said dollars baby what about elizabeth's warehouse elizabeth warehouse blah, blah. elizabeth's warehouse police contact a cult expert and oh what girl i just deleted half my nose i'll be goddamned i look like a jackson oh my god <laughs> Give me my nose back. I guess that's enough enough of it. That's enough of it, I guess. Where was I?